Hi everyone and welcome to the first part in a short series I'm going to do about dialogue systems and how to implement a, a good one into your game. So to demonstrate what the end goal is, I'm just going to click play. So this is a quite a robust system, it allows you to use it for multiple things, not just at dialogue with NPCs. So for example, we can go up to this signpost here, push the interactive key, and it will tell us some information. And likewise, I can go up to this NPC, and he will have something to say as well, with multiple lines of dialogue. And this di uh, NPC will have different type lines of dialogue. Okay, so this, as I say, really robust and really simple. And uh, to show you how easy it is to add new NPCs to dialogue, I can just drag in a new NPC, like so, and just change the ID number of the NPC to say three. And push play, and now I can go up to this guy. And he'll have his lines of dialogue. So this is really uh, a really fun and uh, good way of setting up a dialogue system. And probably one of the better ways I've ever used dialogue in games. Um, it allows a lot more freedom and it also gives the opportunity for someone else to write dialogue. And you can just import it in and it will just work. And you can edit the dialogue outside of this program. So this tutorial series is going to cover a few new things that I haven't covered before. So we're going to learn three major new things, and that is widgets, uh, interfaces, and data structures. So, as I said, this probably will take a couple of parts, um, but I'm sure we'll get there, hopefully, with no problems. So I'm going to minimise this and go into a new blank document. Okay. So here I am in the first person template uh, in UE4. So the first thing you want to start off doing is creating new widgets for your dialogue and once that's there we can then assign what text it's got to show and so forth so the first thing we'll do is make a new folder in my content browser keep myself organized dialogue Open up. and in here I'm going to add a new widget so to find a widget you'll find it if on add new user interface and the widget blueprint and you will name this however you want. So I'm going to name mine dialogue widget and open it up. So what is a widget? A widget is a extra thing that you can display on the screen on top of the viewport. You can also display it inside the game but you typically don't, you typically mostly keep it inside the viewport. So it's an extra piece of information that you can pass uh, data to. So this is how you do things like heads-up displays, like health bars, ammo counters, maps, menus, those sort of things. So we're going to use it for our dialogue window. So that little box that came up in, uh, at the bottom of the screen. So just... Oh, that little box you see at the bottom, that grey box with some text in it. That's what we're going to make now. So in this widget editor, you've got uh, a few things. So firstly, you've got uh, the viewport, which shows you what it visually looks like. On the left hand side you've got the palette window and the hierarchy window. So the palette window is all the tools that you have available at your disposal. And all these things help you build your um, widget. The hierarchy is where you mostly work. So you, rather than drag stuff from the palette to the viewport, you much rather want to drag it from here to your hierarchy instead. Um, it makes it a lot easier to select stuff in the hierarchy and rather than the viewport. Um, and when you do click on one of these, uh, so if I click on the canvas panel, for example, that's currently in there by default, you'll see the details panel on the right hand side change to show its various options. And each one of these different palette options that are available to you will have different details that you can change. And finally, at the bottom, you've got the animation oh, animation uh, palettes. Uh, we're not going to do it, anything with this uh, video, but this is how you can make an animated uh, widget. So widgets have two views. You've got designer view, such as this, where it handles all the visual elements. And then you have a graph view, where you handle all the coding on the back end. So we're going to go into our designer, and we're going to create our dialog box. So to do that, I'm going to use a border. Okay, so I'm going to use a border here, and drag that into my canvas panel. And you'll see it here. So I'm going to scale this up and move it into the correct position that I want my dialog window to show. So the various options available to you for this are all down here. So you've got things related to the actual slot itself, its content, appearance, 
his behavior, and so on and so forth. Uh, the first thing I want to change is anchor. So this little flower looking icon is its anchor. And anchor is basically how it knows where to draw the widget in relation to the screen canvas. Uh, sounds very complicated, um, but for example, if you have a screen of a different ratio size, the, this will always draw relative in position to this. So if you want it in the center all times, and you want to keep it relative to the center, you can change the anchor over here to any of these options. So I'm going to choose the bottom center there. So that means it will stay in the bottom center, no matter what size screen or ratio that you're working with. So I'm going to change some of the settings over here for its appearance. Uh, brush and brush color handle its appearance. So I'm going to go into brush color, change the color of it to a dark gray, a bit darker than that. And I'm going to change its alpha to say 0.4. Okay. There we go. So with a border, a border allows us to actually put stuff inside of it. Um, so if I click a text uh, block now and drag this inside of the border, it now appears here. So with this text block, um, I've got various settings again here. I've got the text it shows, got its alignment and padding, uh, font, font size, and so on and so forth. I'm just going to center it and vertically align it. So it's in the middle of the box. Uh, almost done here. All we've got left to do now is go into our graph and we're going to add a variable. So click on the plus variable in the variable section. Very similar to an actor setup. And here I'm going to type in dialog text. And this is going to be a type of a text. And click compile. With that compiled, go back to your designer and with the text block selected, go to your text block details and where it has content for text, where you can type in what text it shows. So, uh, so for example, text here. See, it changes down here. I want that to be variable so I can change it during the game. So we just made a variable. We're going to bind it to this content here. So this bind button, which you see on several of the detail panels, you can click on here and choose properties related to this widget. So this one's got a variable called dialog text, which will fit nicely with that. Click compile, and we are done with this widget editor, and we can close that. So how to get this to show on screen? Well, what you're going to do is you open up your player character blueprint. So I'm going to go into the first person character blueprint, because I'm in the first person example. And you want to go to begin play. I'm just going to detach this one because I don't need motion controls. Just delete all that stuff I want it to later. Anyway, the main thing is this begin play. So with begin play, I want to add it to the viewport. So we've created a widget. And what that is, is basically a parent copy. So we need to make a copy of that widget that we just made. So drag out begin play and do create widget. And you get this construct none. So here you've got a drop down box where you can choose which widget you want to use. So I'm going to choose my dialogue widget. And you have to tell it who owns this widget. So which player is owning this widget. So because we're on this first person character, I can drag out of here and type in get player controller. And that will uh, attach it to the, the current player. Um, so once it's created, we want to save a reference to this. So on the return value, we want to drag that out and click promote to variable. And I'm going to save this as my dialog window. You can call it whatever you like. I just called it that. And the final step is to make it appear onto your viewport. So we made a copy of it. We saved the reference to that copy. And now we're going to add it to the viewport. So drag out of here and do add to view oh, viewport and you can connect up the reference to the target here now I'll click compile and uh, close this and click play you'll see the widget now appears on the screen there's no text showing because our variable is empty by default so nothing will display um, so our next job is to make it uh, display text and only display text when we are interacting with something so, 
to do that is uh, we're going to go into uh, where have I lost self dialogue. Um, the first thing we're going to do is rather than go into the NPC stuff, we'll start with the easy one, and that is this um, uh, signpost thing. Okay, so you can use a signpost. Uh, I've included it in the detail um, description below the video. I'm just going to import it here. Um, there we go. And import. Okay. So I've got a signpost mesh. And I'm going to create a new actor for this signpost. So add new. Blueprint class. Actor. And call it signpost. Oh, signpost BP. I'll call it then. Right, so. I'm going to open this up and going to add a couple of components to it. So components are up here on the top left. Click on add component. And the first one I'm going to add is a static mesh. And I'm going to click on it and show the details for that static mesh. And with the drop down, choose that signpost mesh that I have previously created. Like so. Alongside that, I also want to make an interactable range. So if I go back to my first example, you can see it's got this box around the outside of it. This box is the range that the player has to be within it to be able to interact with it. So go add component box collision. And you want to move it and scale it into move it and scale it into position. Uh, make it a bit wider than that. And you can also make it so it only works when the player's in front of it by just moving the field like this. Okay, click compile, and we're done with setting up the components. That's all it requires. So uh, I'm now going to close this. And we've got that signpost actor worked up. So I'm just going to put one into the world for now. It won't do nothing yet, but at least I could put it into the world. Like so. Okay. Right, so now we're going to create uh, a new interact uh, feature for our player. So that when we're near this, we can interact with it and open it up. Now, we're going to use something quite new here. We're going to use something called an interface. Um, so, we're going to create a new interface. And the way you do that, you click on Add New. Go to Blueprints. And choose Blueprint Interface. And you want to name this. So, I'm going to call mine Interact underscore I for interface. And open it up. So, an interface is a weird thing. So, basically, it allows you to have common functions amongst different objects um, now the case use for this uh, can be a bit abstract for some people but um, we're going to use it for this and you'll see why later on it's easier to show you in a second with my previous example so I'm going to name this function here interact now you'll notice that this middle bit is read only meaning I can't actually do anything here Okay, I can't create nothing you can only create functions here and you can create different inputs and outputs for those functions, but only functions. Uh, so once you're done here, click Compile, and you can close that. So where interfaces come in handy is in here, I have an NPC and a signpost. Two very different things. This one's a character. This one is a actor. Very different. But they both use the same interface, meaning that I just have to code in one thing for my character to do. So if I go into my character, you'll see here... I can get all the interactors with the particular interface, such as interaction here, go through them all and check whether I'm overlapping them and just run that one function. It saves having to check and do code for NPCs, signposts, uh, books, anything else that may use the same sort of functionality where I can interact with it. Um, which saves a lot of time and uh, is a lot neater and easier to read. Um, so that's what that's used for. So we're going to end it there for the first episode. 
Uh, in the next episode, we're going to make it so the dialogue window appears for a signpost and uh, changing the text for the signpost to be whatever you want. Thank you for joining me this time. Please like and share this video and comment if you have any questions or get stuck below and join us into the second episode where we continue creating a dialogue system. Cheers. See you next time.